when it comes to mushroom production, we only see the mushroom, but we forget that mushroom actually developed from mycelium. So what is a mycelium? Welcome back to my channel. This is your girl, Akintuna Evening. Let's get into detail to know what mycelium is. So have you ever seen a moldy bread or a rotten tomatoes developed before? It developed a spiderweb-like structure. I guess we have all seen bread growing moldy before. So the question now is, are all myceliums edible? Leave your comments at the comment section. I'll be waiting for your answers. So mycelium, they develop in a thread-like structure and they are the key stage in mushroom production. So the mushroom is the fruiting body that you see, but the key stage or the starting point of mushroom is mycelium. So these threads are usually white or creamy in color and they are made up of long fiber that are known as hyphae. So this structure that we are talking about about is the mycelium right which is the vegetative um, part of the fungi or the vegetative structure of a fungi so mushroom is a fungi the vegetative structure of it is called the mycelium so mycelium is mostly found in um, soil or dead organic matter that is why mushrooms are grown on decomposed organic matter such as rice straw, wheat straw, or hardwood or softwood. The next thing we are going to look at is the structure of the mycelium. So the mycelium structure, how does it look like? Let's get into it. To understand what mycelium is, you have to also know what a fungi is. So you have to have a clear picture of what fungi is. So fungi are specialized eukaryotes that can decompose extremely complex natural formations. That means that they break down uh, organic matter or they decompose substances. Their cell walls are rich like that of insects, exoskeletons, and they reproduce asexually by spores production or spores discharge if today is your first time thank you and please join the family by hitting on the subscription button give me a thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to leave your comment at the comment section it's all about mushrooms and vegetable production so the spores that the fungi produce can be transformed into mycelium so when the fungi produces the spores they are now then transformed into myceliums however until it connects with another mycelium to produce a dichaiotic mycelium then the mycelium is considered asexual so this mycelium can subsequently produce a mushroom as we all know or a fruiting body of fungi so um, it's not all mushrooms that are edible and then this all type of mushroom also developed from mycelium so mycelium can be either edible or non-edible it should be noted um, that fruiting bodies only appears when um, the nutrition gaseous exchange the temperature environmental conditions when they are all favorable then the mushroom starts to grow so when there is excessive moisture or droughts like low humidity content then myceliums doesn't grow therefore we don't have mushrooms in the system so before you can grow your mushroom you have to have a, a good weather condition and your moisture content shouldn't be excessive so myceliums can be as small as a grains and it can also be as large as a forest so this means that when mushrooms get the favorable environment, they can grow very large to the extent of a forest. You can imagine that. So the mycelium that we are talking about, they have a rigid cell wall and that serves as an adaptive structure which enables it or allows it to pass through death or debris and other conditions. But as a farmer, when you want to grow mushrooms, you have to provide all the requirements, the neat environment that is required for the mushroom to do well. 
So before mycelium start to develop, they are very tiny and thread-like structures and you can't see with your naked eyes. Therefore, you need a microscope. So before the fruiting bodies grow, mycelium might resemble little tree under a microscope. So now let's take a look at the purpose of mycelium. What does it do? What is the benefit? Why is it even important? First of all, a mycelium helps in pest control. And how do they do that? They do that by competing underground with bacteria and viruses. They do this by producing a poisonous substances that kills them. So there are beneficial fungi that are used in the production of insecticides for controlling some bacteria and viruses. In the field of plant specs management, fungi are used for insect control because the fungi can penetrate through the insect cuticle. Examples of such fungi are Bulvaria bacina, for the control of white flies, aphids, trips, and corn borer. Metarhizium anisopleiad for thermite treatment. Pistillomyces species for control of white flies. We also have Verticillium lichenia for the control of white flies and trips. With the use of fungi to control insect space, there is no chemical release to the environment, therefore it enhances environmental protection. Because the mycelia are not toxic to the environment, they can be used to manage natural pests and diseases over a lengthy period of time without it causing any harm to the environment. And this concept is also part of the plant's pest management system. Think about this. What if the next world plastic is going to be mycelia? Wow! Because of the way they grow, they spread widely, and it has played an important role in previous years by helping in the decomposition of varieties of chemical substances or materials. And then the biomass is converted into compost in this um, way. So they break down all organic matters, they decompose um, substances or waste materials in the environment, they can boost crop production thanks to their symbiotic connections with the plants. So you can think of it, mycelia may communicate with the plants. Yes. Did you know that mycelia can be hard as bricks? Yes, they are very, very, very strong and they can be used as building materials because they are fire resistant. That is according to research I was surprised when I found out. Surprisingly, mycelium can also be used in the fashion industry to mimic the look of texture and the utility of leather. Mycelia can also serve as a bonding agent in building bricks. With this knowledge, I wouldn't be surprised when mycelia takes over the plastics in our environment. For this reason, I'm going to do a research on it and be expecting a video on the topic. Could mycelia take over the plastic in the world in the few generations to come? Yep, this brings us to the end of today's lesson. And this is your girl, Akintuna, the Mushroom Conference. See you, love you.